So Eve is in this situation where she has believed the lie that somehow God is withholding from her. And that's her view of God. And we've talked about times in our life when we believe that God's withholding from us and the need to go to God, because God never withholds from that's us. Right. He's the one who brings the abundant life to us. But in the situation where Eve forms this wrong view of God, it almost organically goes into a wrong view of herself. Wrong view of God leads to wrong view of self. And so we can read in Genesis where Eve forms this view of herself that she's somehow separate from God, that her identity is, I am ashamed. Guilt is the belief that I did something wrong. Shame is the belief that I am something wrong. Yeah. That's the danger of shame. Wow. And so if God's withholding from me, it's because something's wrong with me. And so she develops this false identity of I am shame. And then so she moves in separation to cover herself on her own, to cover her own shame. And all of this creates isolation and separation from the loving God himself. And again, it increases our own internal conflict and our own darkness. So now wrong view of God, and now she's living in a wrong view of herself. So in our lives, this happens. Yeah, I find it interesting because it says that God comes to find Adam and Eve when they're hiding. And they say that they're hiding. Obviously, they're feeling the guilt. They're feeling the fear of, of God, unhealthy fear. And they've taken on this identity of shame. And God says to them, who told you that? Right. Like it's one of the most important questions that we can ask ourselves. When I feel negative emotion about who I am, who's telling me that? Whose voice am I listening to? You know, in my life, I've been fired from jobs or um, gotten in trouble on the job or whatever, or failed. And so when that happens, then I can start to believe, God, you didn't help me. You weren't there for me. And why not? Because I'm not worthy of you. I didn't witness enough on the job. I didn't pray enough. I'm unworthy. I should be ashamed of myself. Now I have the identity of I am a failure. I am unemployed. And again, the result is despair. It's discouragement as long as I'm in that false identity with that wrong view of God. So again, we need to come back to a process where our identity is coming, not from what we do, what we have, and what people think about us, but from fixing our eyes on Jesus. And even when you talk about failing on your job or failing at something, failure is an opportunity to learn right. and to change and to grow. The danger is when you listen to that wrong voice mm -hmm. and you hear that voice say, Ah, you're a failure now. So maybe I can lead through a process this time, just for variety, because I'm an expert at losing <laughs> jobs and things like that. So let's focus, let's breathe, as we've been learning how to breathe. And this time I want you to let yourself feel your body. So relaxing your mind and your jaw and your shoulders and just down your body, relaxing your arms, relaxing your chest, your stomach, really relaxing those areas and feeling rest there, your legs, down your legs, your feet, just relax, rest. And as you're breathing and resting, we wanna fix our eyes on Jesus one who holds all things together, who all things are created in and by Christ. I just want you to picture being with Jesus, however Jesus shows himself to you. Just imagine you're with Jesus. As we're practicing truth-telling, just tell Jesus 
These are, these are things I believe about myself based on the circumstances of life I'm in right now. These are things I've come to believe about myself. I am unworthy. I am not good enough that somehow I've let you down, people down, and I'm a failure. So practice truth-telling to Christ. And Jesus, are there any other names that I believe about myself from the circumstances that I'm in in my life? Again, you might want to write these down on a piece of paper or something. As you truth tell, Lord, I just feel like a failure. Lord, I, I feel ashamed. I believe I'm a disappointment. You want to give those to Jesus and imagine Jesus taking that list from you. And you're giving those false names He's taking them and then you're asking him in the exchange, what do you say about me? Eve could have just said to God right in the middle of listening to the lie, what do you say about me? Simply that would have averted a lot of her struggle. Jesus, what do you say about me? takes the false and we receive what he says about us. Write down what he says. Tear up the other piece of paper. Write down in your journal, what does Jesus say about me? And then again, as you wrap up the day, closing out the day, try and go to sleep asking Christ how do you want me to see myself? Show me the way you see me. And then receive that from him. Take his yoke upon you, for his yoke is easy, it's light, and it gives rest for your soul. And go to sleep in that truth.